Hey, hey, party people. Welcome to Adobe Illustrator tutorial number three. Today, we're going to go over uh, the align and distribute tools and a couple of my most frequently used Pathfinder tools. And, uh, you know, the thing is, I quit doing the Adobe Illustrator tutorials because it didn't seem like a lot of you were interested, but then they started picking up steam while I wasn't looking and I started getting more requests for me to continue them. So, you know, help me out. Let me know in the comments uh, if you do want me to continue the Illustrator series and what things that you are most looking forward to learning. And then I can kind of uh, cultivate future tutorials tutorials to your needs and interests. All right. So really quick, the first tutorial that I did kind of covered the basics, you know, when to use Photoshop versus when to use Illustrator, you know, what's in the toolbox. The second one, we explored the uh, pen tool stroke options box very thoroughly. And I showed you all the things that you could do with stroke widths and outlining strokes and paths and joining and averaging and um, how to use dash lines to create zippers and fringe and all that good stuff. For those of you who are new to my channel, I use Adobe Illustrator strictly for fashion design purposes, which means like 60% ah, of the time I'm doing flats, 30% of the time I'm doing fashion graphics uh, that are eventually going to be turned into um, like silkscreen graphics, embroideries, patches, appliques, and then the rest of the time, you know, some figure work, some artsy work, not really, but it's mostly flats and graphics. So if you're down for that, if you're interested in that, keep watching. The number one most frequent reason I use the Pathfinder and Align tools is to make holes inside a shape. Classic example, doing a zipper pull on a flat or figure. This is a very standard zipper pull and the vast majority of zipper pulls will have a hole on the end here. Uh, except for invisible zippers. They have that long, solid dongle thing. You want this hole here, and you don't want it to be just like a white shape. If you go back, you'll recall that whenever I do flats and graphics and whatnot, I always draw them in complete shapes so that they are always ready to be filled in with color or pattern. And I want to create this hole so that whatever I put behind the zipper pull, you can see through this hole. And if you don't do that, then if you put this on a pink shirt, you have to change this circle into pink. And if you put it on top of a pattern shirt, you have to put the pattern inside. Oh my God, even talking about it is tedious. Let's not do that. Okay, moving on. For the sake of brevity, if I have already taught you something in the previous tutorials, I'm going to just zoom through it in this one so we can focus on the new stuff. So we're going into this layer. This, this is just an image that I pulled from Google Image Search. I'm going to template that layer. And it is dimmed and locked and not going anywhere. OK, moving on to a second layer. I like to put all my guides in one layer because it's just easier and cleaner to keep things all separate and stuff. So if you don't have these rulers uh, showing up on your screen, just hit Command R. You can go in here and right click and you can change so that now they're inches, whatever you need, right? And then you're gonna click and drag your guide bar to the center of this pull tab. Why? Because I, whenever I have something that's symmetrical, I only draw one side and then I mirror reflect copy it because I'm lazy. We're gonna lock that layer. We're not touching the guides. We're not touching the template. We're going into this third layer to start drawing. Z for zoom, 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 zoom. P for pen tool, and I'm just doing this really quick. Really quick is code for, it's gonna look a little messy and I don't care. <laughs> I know. Click P to end that line. I'm gonna lock this, cause whenever, wait, why isn't it showing up? Oh, <laughs> cause it needs a stroke color, Zoe, Nur. okay. So whenever I have, I'm drawing a shape on top of a shape, I lock the bottom shape just so that the pen tool isn't interfering. So I'm going to draw this shape now. 
spiral. And you know, when you're doing a zipper pull, you're going to get all beautiful and get in all these corners and shadows and facets and stuff, but not for this quickie tutorial, right? Okay. And we have our three shapes. We're going to unlock this layer from before. We're going to select all. We're going to hit O, not zero, O, enter, and that'll show your reflect tool. You're going to copy. So now you have two halves of a whole. Burr, 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 using the arrow key to shove everything over. We're going to zoom up in here. Burr, 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 burr. We're going to use the direct selection arrow A. And we're going to average and join, average and join, average and join. I'm going to lock one of these because there's like all these. All right, so now we have three shapes, the head, the hook loop thingy that the pull tab is attached to, and the pull tab. Now we've got to draw in these holes. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool. If you go in here, you can see all these shape tools. Here's the ellipse tool. Now you can draw an oval. If you want a perfect circle, you can hold down the shift key. Shift, no shift, shift, no shift. At this stage, I like to use the Align Objects tool, this one, to make sure that everything is aligned. And you select all the pieces. And if you align left, everything is going to shove over to the left. And if you align right, everything is going to shove over to the right. And if you align it to the center, everything is going to be perfectly centered. Easy peasy. Okay, so now everything is lined up perfectly, centered perfectly. I'm going to go ahead and fill in a color. Let's choose a lovely hot pink. Ta-da! Now, we are going to exclude the head because that's not part of, we're just making holes in the tab, the dangly tab, and not the head. So I'm going to lock this thing. And I'm going to lock this thing, and so we just have these parts selected. You're going to go to your Pathfinder, and you're going to hit minus front, which means whatever pieces are on the top layers, the front layers, okay, see how the layers are ordered? Those are going to go away. Bam. And now it's clear. So... The next thing you want to do is make sure that all your layers are in the correct order. See, this thing is the loop that hooks the tab in. So you want to make sure this, we're going to unlock those, is on top. So everything is in the correct order. And now, look at that. It looks just like the other thing. You know, clearly more rudimentary. And so if you want to take this zipper tab and you want to put it on a blue shirt, you can do whatever you want and, oh no. <laughs> the blue's got to go in the back, right? Whatever you put on top, you're going to see, right? Sometimes you want to do, I like to do a little something like this, where I kind of swing the tab out just so that, you know, the flat has a little bit of interest without changing the garment construction. Another thing that I do quite frequently is kind of like monogram, logo, sort of uh, letter things. And of course, you can start with a font and, you know, modify it to fit your needs. And it'll already have a hole in the back, so the blue will show up. Or you can draw your own using the pen tool. Again, let's do something really fast. I said fast, not ugly. Wow, that is still ugly, but whatever. We're rolling with it. Select both of them, and then, again, minus front. So whatever you put this on top of, whether it's, you know, you're embroidering a striped T-shirt, you're going to see whatever's behind. Another thing that I do a lot with the Align and Pathfinder tools is grommets and eyelets. Okay, so we're going to go in here, we're going to pick the ellipse tool, we're going to make a perfect circle holding down the shift key, and then inside I'm going to make another perfect circle holding down the shift key, and these are not aligned, 
use my selection tool and I'm going to align my objects. I'm going to align them horizontally and I'm going to align them vertically. And so this is perfectly centered in here. And then I'm going to go into my minus front. Okay. If you hit your minus front and you're seeing things funny, maybe your layers are wrong. Make sure that the place you want to delete is on the top layer. So here is my eyelet or grommet or whatever you want to call them. So let's do a few of these. So let's say you have a bunch of these eyelets and grommets and you want to line them up to draw lacing on shoes or a corset or what have you, right? So you're going to align them. And then notice how the spacing between them are all different. You can use your distribute tools. And now they are evenly distributed. And you could do them horizontally as well. So let's say you want to these to be lined up horizontally. Bam! Now they're all lined up. I know the bounding box is diagonal, but you'll see here they're actually lined up. So here we have them lined up and you want to distribute the objects so now they are evenly spaced. So horizontally or vertically, you can do that with these distribute and align tools. So let's say this is one side of your shoe, you have your grommets, and I'm going to make them into a group. Because if they're all four pieces, I have to select all of them to move them around. But I want this to function as one item now. So this is a group. I want to copy and paste. And now I have another side. I'm going to select both of these and align them along the top. And so now they are even. And let's add some shoelaces. I'm going to use my pen tool. Use these guides. You see how the pink lines are showing me where the exact center of that eyelet is? Bam. And again, here. Bam. So there's my path. And I'm going to go into my stroke options box. And if you can't find your toolbox, just go into your window. And... Like that. And I'll round the cap. I mentioned this in tutorial number two where I like to outline the stroke so that I can change the size of whatever I'm drawing and not lose the scale. So I'm going to go into path, outline stroke. I'm going to change this color so you guys can see things better. So I'm going to take this O, not zero, O, reflect, enter. You're going to copy it and now you have crisscrossing shoelaces. Now, you have these two pieces, right? And if you want to maintain the X and the shape and everything, you can select both of these and group them, and it'll just automatically keep them together. Shift-Command-G is ungroup. So, or you can take the both of these, and you can hit the Unite tool, this Pathfinder tool. Bam. And do you see how now the outline stroke only goes around the X? See again? When it's the two lines, you see the lines cutting through. When it's united, it, the stroke just goes around the X. And I do similar things with the align distribute tools with uh, in order to do buttons on a on a center front placket, okay? You wanna make sure they're lined and distributed evenly, right? Snaps are the same thing. This is eyelet lace. Okay, people call it eyelet lace, but technically it's not a lace. It's a solid fabric, and it has all these holes cut out, and then the holes are edged with stitching so that the holes don't fray, and they're done in these elaborate, sometimes geometric, sometimes simple patterns, and you can, Illustrate something like this using the tools I just showed you. You draw in the holes, you put in the patterns, you use your align and distribute tools to make things look really even. You know, copy and paste to get a repeating pattern, and then select everything and get the holes so that when you have this fabric and you put it on top of legs, you'll see where the skin shows through. If you put it on top of a lining, 
or a, you know, maybe this is the edge of a blouse and you wear it over a skirt, you'll see the color of the skirt through these holes. You can do those kinds of things with these tools. Yeah, there's a lot of these shape modes and pathfinder tools, uh, but I think this is enough for one day. But you know what? You should go ahead and draw some shapes and play and explore. There's like, this is like the most like risk-free kind of experimentation. You're not even wasting paper or markers or anything. And this kind of like vector line art uh, files from Illustrator are very small. Like, so they'll take up almost no room in your hard drive should you choose to even save these experiment documents. Hashtag always be practicing. We are not made of magic. We are made of practice. If your first one sucks, you're right on track. Do let me know in the comments if you want me to continue with this Illustrator series. Of course, drop me any questions you have on using these tools. And uh, I will see you in the next video.